These are the spiders in your house. So this spider lives in the corner of our kitchen, and I just happened to catch her tangling with a prey insect. So I thought I'd try to get some decent video of the event and kind of lucked out with this lens. Now you might be thinking, that terrible beastly spider is murdering that helpless innocent ladybug. Keep watching and might not feel so sorry for that so-called ladybug. First of all, what is this thing? So this is a long-bodied cellar spider. This one's a female. Let's talk about the name for a second. These are often called Daddy Long Legs, but the problem with that is that this name's been applied to at least two other totally different creatures. Harvestmen, which are arachnids but not spiders, and craneflies, which are not even arachnids but are actually insects. So the name sort of varies regionally. Growing up in Alberta, Daddy Long Leg referred to Harvestmen. I don't know where they call craneflies Daddy Long Legs, but somewhere they do. We call them mosquito hawks. But Daddy Long Leg is really just kind of a bad way to refer to any of these because it's really non specific and it can be really unclear what exactly you're talking about. So, really, we should just let's just call them cellar spiders. So, let's talk about the actual spider. So, the Wikipedia page for this species is actually pretty good uh, and it's pretty detailed, but I'll try to boil down some of it and speak to some of the things that'll actually matter to the general person who finds these living in their house. So this is Fulcus phalangioides, is the species, the long-bodied cellar spider. Uh, if you live in coastal Canada, or pretty much anywhere in the U.S., you've almost definitely encountered one of these. The range maps say they don't live in central <clears throat> or northern Canada, but I'm a little dodgy on that. I don't remember ever seeing them in Alberta, but they were common on the west coast, and they're certainly common here in Nova Scotia. Apparently they're all over Europe. So these are what's called a space weaver. So they weave kind of a three-dimensional cobweb instead of a two-dimensional plane web like an orb weaver does. Now there's a super common rumor about these spiders that says that their venom is actually super deadly, but their fangs are too small to pierce human skin. Neither of those things are true. So they, they can bite and they can pierce your skin. Good luck getting one too, though. And their venom is harmless to humans, despite the fact that it can take down a black widow. But to you, it, on the rare chance you did manage to get bitten by one of these, it wouldn't really do anything to you. Which is lucky, because they do tend to live in and around human dwellings. They're not great at dealing with the cold. So if you live in a colder climate, shooing these spiders outside is probably going to be unsurvivable for them. So if you can find a spot where you're happy for them to live, like in a shed or a garage or a storage room or something like that, they'll happily live there and stay out of your way and take care of the other pests there for you. They're pretty good house spiders, really. Generally, once they've made a web, they tend to stay there. Some sources do say that they'll sometimes leave the web to hunt, and that might be true. Probably is. Uh, but any time I found one of these in what looks like an established web, the spider has always been there in that web any time I looked. So for the most part, you can count on knowing where they are. They're not going to surprise you. And you know that they're generally going to stay there. So you're not going to be up at night wondering, where is it? Oh, well, it's probably right where you left it. And from a distance, they're barely visible. They tend to stay in sort of undisturbed places, like garages or storage rooms. You might find them, you know, well, this one lives in the corner of my kitchen. So they do sometimes hang out in the open. But you almost never see one scurrying across the floor or something like that because they always tend to weave their webs under some kind of overhang. So under a shelf or between a wall and a ceiling, up in a corner, or under a workbench, places like that. So they do sort of stay out of your way. And they're really not interested in coming down off their web to bite you. It's actually kind of difficult to get them to bite you, like I said. And the only time they're likely to bite is if they actually get trapped against your skin and they think they're going to get squished, then maybe they will, but it's really unlikely. They are very capable predators, though. They can take down prey much larger than themselves, and even in, in this footage, you can probably see that the, the insect's body is quite a bit bigger than the body of the spider. So these things will take care of a lot of pests in your home, from fruit flies to house flies and maybe even wasps and that kind of thing. Like I said, they've even been known to prey on the seriously venomous redback and black widow spiders. 
Let's talk about this bug that she's eating. So again, this spider probably looks like a big old meanie webbing up this poor innocent ladybug. A closer look at this supposed ladybug tells a different story. So if we look at its face, see that M-shaped mark on its head? This is the giveaway that this is, in fact, an Asian lady beetle, not a ladybug. So this is Harmonia axiridis. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. But they are a far nastier invasive species. So these jerks can sort of bite you just by landing on you. And they'll emit this nasty smelling chemical if you dare to bother them back. And they do compete with actual native ladybugs, which are harmless and actually beneficial. So let's have a look as she takes care of this invasive pest. So I don't think she'd even bitten this beetle at this point. This beetle had wandered into the cobweb and been stuck there long enough for this spider to show up and start throwing silk at it. So when I first saw this happening, the beetle was actually up against the wall. And by the time I started filming, it was further out into the web. So the spider is using her rear pair of legs to wrap the silk around this beetle. She won't risk getting her head or her body close enough to it to actually bite it yet, because it's still capable and dangerous. You can actually see its legs still moving, so it's still fighting here. And if the worst happens in this scenario, the, the spider can afford to lose a leg or even two. Spiders will regenerate lost legs in the next molt, so she can afford to lose them but she, she'll keep her head and her body well clear of the prey, and the sheer length of her legs lets her do this. Now, watch how methodically she's doing this. This spider knows exactly what she's doing, and she's got a, you can watch the pattern happen here. I was kind of blown away when I saw this, because I'd never really had the chance to really look at it and sort of re-watch it again and again and watch how she was doing it. So yeah, she, she definitely has her method and she looks very good at it. So here's a still photo of the same spider that I shot a few days earlier. Uh, and with the still photo, I had the opportunity to see a lot more detail. So you can get kind of a good look at them. I will admit these spiders aren't that pleasant to look at. They don't have the cute factor that jumping spiders do. They don't have the sheer beauty of the orb weavers. But when you get to know them a little bit, they do have their own kind of appeal. They are really kind of graceful in a way. And here's a close-up photo of the spider once she'd got this thing all wrapped up, actually eating it. <clears throat> so here she is taking care of this invasive species for us. One more thing about these spiders that is really cool is if they are disturbed, their defense mechanism is this crazy kind of dancing with those really long legs and the super skinny legs and the small body, they'll just throw themselves around very chaotically, although they do have their own pattern, but it makes them almost impossible to see when they're doing this, and they can do it for quite some time. So if you see one, you can just go up and just tickle the web a little bit and watch them go crazy. It's quite something to see, actually. And I guess the last couple of general details, uh, apparently these spiders, the females can live up to about three years. Their bodies would never get that big, but their leg spans can get pretty huge. I don't really have a measurement, but yeah, th with those long legs, they can appear very big. But here's a shot of this particular one next to my hand for scale, and my hands aren't huge. This is actually a little bit on the smaller side, this one, so they do get a little bit bigger than this. Anyway, there it is, Fulcus phalangioides, the long-bodied cellar spider. If you see them, be nice to them. They're good. Let them stick around. If you absolutely can't put up with them, put them somewhere where they'll survive and continue taking care of bugs for us. That's it for me.